Hey guys, what's up? It's Dane at Zim's Guitars. And I have what looks like a Gibson Les Paul Custom. But if we look closely, we might discover that there's something strange about this guitar. Scott's hanging out down here today. And again, we've got Neil hanging out, working on his scratcher tickets. You having any luck there? No. You should give up that hobby, man. That's fun. So, uh, <laughs> so come on in. Let's take a look at this thing. Scott will help us out a little bit. Scott, what, what's your first impressions of this thing? Well, it looks like it's got an aged uh, trim on it here and stuff. Uh, this is not a Gibson. Yeah, so. so so the first thing you look for, if you guys are trying to figure out if your guitar is an authentic Gibson or if it's a Chinese copy, this has the imported bridge on there where you take the slotted screwdriver and you can make your adjustments. The real Gibsons, all you'll have is the little thumbnail right here to adjust that. So yes, mm -hmm. the first sign that is fake. Yeah, and the way these are these pickups are fading here, Gibson doesn't fade like that. You'll you'll see wear marks and, and it'll be worn off where you played it and pick it, but there'll be still gold all the way around it and stuff. This thing's not uh, this thing's too even. Well, I bought this guitar from so, a guy and he told me it was a Chipson, which is short for a fake Gibson. And he told me he went ahead and he put Epiphone pickups in here. Mm -hmm. So this is the stock pickup that came from China. And even though these are, you know, Epiphone pickups, they're still Chinese pickups, but these are different. He has them wired in to where this center pickup is disconnected. Yeah, another thing is you can see the seams in here. Right across here, you can see that seam and stuff. Usually on a hand sand it gives and you're not going to see that. Uh, there's also a lot of waviness in the top of the cap up here, so Gibson wouldn't have that either. And then you got kind of a uh, orange peel finish going on too. Mm -hmm. it's not yeah, so the finish in isn't so great mm -hmm. in it. Let's look at the back here. Um, you know, you got some scuffs. He played it. Uh, this doesn't fit down in there really good. Um, you know, people always talk about the binding is weird, mm -hmm. and and that is true. It looks like he sanded on the back of the neck here a little bit which is a nice technique and then it also looks yep. like he's got some sort of a signature and so it was somebody's uh you know model what signature does that look like i, don't I have no idea but uh, being the nice guy that he is he took his little stencil maker mm -hmm. and and he he put a little sticker on there that says fake you're also missing something else that's really important. What's that? Neil, get in here on this. It's not left-handed. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see there's no volute, so mm -hmm. I'm still interested in what signature that is on there. Um, the Black Beauty, would that be a Peter Frampton signature? I don't know. That doesn't look like Frampton. That does not look like a Peter Frampton, does it? Now, a lot of people use these, though. So. And if we look close at the um, Grover tuners, these are imported sort of fake knockoff Grovers. They're um, a little tall for a Grover. Are they tall? Yeah, they're and, really tall. And the, uh, where, where it was stamped out and you have the name Grover in there, mm -hmm. it's like barely there. They're kind of weak. So, yeah, you can, you can see little things about it. Yeah, this orange peel finish really yeah. shows up on the back because it's not been worn much. And here you can see another oh, seam. You can see another seam right down through here. Don't how heavy is it? Well, normal. let's get our little fish scale out. Let's take a look at how heavy it is. See how much this sucker weighs? Yeah, I'm going to guess it's... Um, here, let's see. I'm going to guess it's uh, eight and a half pounds. Hey, you could strum, strung it lefty if you want to. Eight pounds, 14 ounces. So it's actually lighter than that 50s tribute, Les Paul, that I did a video on yesterday. Mm -hmm. 
um, the binding along the neck here. <laughs> On real Gibsons, the binding will roll up over the edge. You have the fret nibs. All the, the fret way nibs. Up. Right. Uh huh. No fret nibs on this one. No fret nibs. Gotta have nibs. Yep, yeah, if you got binding, gotta have nibs. That's why I buy my Gibsons without binding, because I don't like the wider neck. This is a kind of a cool thing to, to look at. You want to make sure you're getting a real Gibson. Look under the truss rod cover. It's got gold screw there. And it's got a chrome one here that's not attached to anything. There was no meat left to hook that in there. Brian, take a good look right up in there. Boy, that has been chewed up. So, that's what you get guys when you, when you buy one of these things. It probably should take an Allen wrench, and it does, so there I loosened it a little bit, and there I tightened it a little bit, so. Well, neck's pretty straight. Yeah, it, it'll, the it's, a, bad. it's a good plane. Even. Yeah, that's sort of in the, right in the middle where it's kind of loose, so it's not really engaged, but there is no... It's been chipped away right there, so there's no place to put this screw. It, that screw just kind of floats in there. You know, let's, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll take the back plate off so we can see the cheap, fake stuff they put inside here. There Ooh. we are looking inside there. Tiny little pots. There's not much fun things to look at. Are they actually 500K pots? Can you guys see that? I don't think they're marked. Yeah, they're not marked. Nope, they're not marked. They're not marked. And I mean, they look okay for, you know, cheap imports. They're stuff. okay. But they got some kind of signia on them. They didn't say 500K. Super cheap stuff right there, huh? Looks like a third grader That's soldering. about 30 cents <laughs> worth of electronics in this guitar. Looks like my soldering. <laughs> well, the previous owner um, did uh, put in the uh, Epiphone pickups. He said the pickups that were in it were really bad. Mm -hmm. Unpotted, right? So there is that. And he had this installed like this. It doesn't fit in there good. He had it in like this, didn't he? Yeah, flip it around, see if it fits better. That's better. We should put it in that way. Yep. At least it's flush. Okay. Check the signature. See if see if that's Jimmy Page's signature or a crappy facsimile. That's what it is, huh? Yeah. So it's the 20 20th anniversary Jimmy Page. Yeah, he I think from what I understand he had a uh, he had a he had a three pickup custom at one time when he was doing session work and and you know they you know they they went out and they reissued a bunch of that stuff. Damn, nothing. You drinking that stuff, bro? That's not good for you. It's all right. So right. But yeah, the, the, yeah. Hey, check it out. I found some guy on eBay selling decals of Jimmy Page's signature. Wow. <laughs> wow, there you go. Put them on any guitar you want. What's he want for them? Uh, eight bucks. And his name is Jay Page. <laughs> yeah. With a J on the page. <laughs> Johnny Page. <laughs> so it's a Jimmy Page. Yep. Replica. Yep. Gibson did a, they did a reissue of his custom at one time, and they also did a reissue of his, I think, number one and number two. But this one's not Gibson. This is nah, probably AliExpress, huh? <laughs> well, where well, do you buy, where would you buy one of these? I Dark wouldn't. Alley? <laughs> I wouldn't. I don't know. I but if you, if you did go on some sort of a... There's a, there's a website you can buy Chipsons. Uh -huh. And they, that's all they sell is Chipsons. Right. And they, they import all over the place. And uh, they never really say that it's going to be a real Gibson. 
Maybe that's what's Even clogging up our Gibson ports. All, all those chipsons coming in, huh? Could be. There, there is a website. I've been on it and look at it. And they, you know, all the guitars look like Gibsons. And they say they're Gibsons, but they aren't Gibsons. And they're four or five hundred dollars. So we're looking at this tailpiece right here, and it's really high over up on this side. So I think I'm just going to try to. Make an adjustment there and make a few adjustments and see if we can get it to play somewhat decent. good for if you are in a garage band if you're in like a little punk rock band a little three-piece kind of thing if you're young if you're just gonna just play hard and aggressive it's a great guitar for that kind of stuff <laughs> counterfeit guitar and they should not make these things but they are making them and there's really nothing we can do about them at this point yeah he's gonna give me a hundred bucks for it oh that's my tip but uh, if you're a beginner or even an intermediate guitar and you got a little band together these things work great so it's kind of uh, you know, if you can go around and you're not ashamed to play one of these things and you're not a guitar, Gibson guitar snob type of person, I mean, they're, they're okay. You know, I've played guitar in punk rock bands for years and years, and this thing is at least as good as some of the old Epiphone stuff that we used to play 10, 20 years ago. And it's probably made in the same Samic factory who, who knows where it's made, but there it is anyhow, guys. It's a fake chips and guitar. It's a Les Paul Custom. And uh, what else can you say? It's a chipson. Everybody have a great day. Mm -hmm.